And there was a priest, uh, a diocesan priest from New York, and he wanted to take a trip to Rome to meet John Paul II. This is while he was still living. And after 10 years of being in a ministry at his church, he uh, took a vacation and took a pilgrimage to Rome to be in the audience with John Paul II. So he left the parish with his associate pastors and his staff, and he got there like three or four days earlier before meeting John Paul II. And what did he do? He toured the churches in Rome. There's lots of beautiful churches in Rome. So as he was going from church to church, as he exited one of the churches, a poor beggar came up to this priest from New York and asked for some money. He spoke English, this poor beggar. And the priest from New York felt bad, so he got his wallet and he gave him some money. I said, here, here you go. Go ahead and buy yourself a meal. And while he gave him some money, he looked him in the eyes and he recognized this poor beggar. He was telling himself, I know this man. I, don't, I can't remember where I've met him, but I know him. But the poor beggar got his money and he ran off. He probably went to go buy some food. So a couple of days pass. He has his audience with the Pope and he's actually privileged to line up after his audience and shake the uh, Pope's hand and to kiss his ring. So he's about to kiss John Paul II's ring and meet him, personally speaking, and it dawned on him who this poor beggar was that he met on the streets a couple of days ago. It was his old seminarian classmate that was ordained a priest with him. And he was thinking, I've only been ordained for about 10 years, and now my fellow seminarian at that time, fellow priest now, doesn't even have enough money to buy food, and he's probably left the church and the priesthood. So he felt so bad, and all of this was going on in his mind and in his heart right before he was about to meet the Pope. So it was his turn to shake, to shake his hand, and he couldn't hold it in. He said, Holy Father, I have a very special prayer request for you. And you can't have a, hold a conversation with the Pope, at least in this instant here, so the Swiss guards were taking him out of the line, and he said, no. John Paul II said, I want to hear what he has to say. So he said, tell me what your prayer request is. And the priest from New York said, uh, Pope, the Holy Father, I was just in the streets of Rome a couple of days ago, and my old seminarian classmate that I was ordained with uh, is now a poor beggar on the streets of Rome. He doesn't even have enough money to eat food, and he's probably left the church and has probably left the priesthood. Can you pray for him? And the Pope obviously was disappointed to hear the news, and he said, yes, I will pray for your old priest friend. So the priest from New York leaves, and it's about a couple of days before he has to go back to his parish. Someone comes in or knocks on his hotel room, and it's a telegram, and it's from the Secretary of State. And it says, John Paul II is inviting you to eat dinner with him tomorrow in the Vatican. Please meet at this time to eat dinner with our Holy Father. And he was thinking, wow, this is a great opportunity. I not only shook his hand, but now I could eat dinner with him. So he kept reading on and says, P.S., the Pope, our Holy Father, would like you to bring your old priest friend. Please bring him. So he was like, oh, okay, well, I really want to meet the Pope, so I have to do this. So he goes out and he eventually finds this poor beggar, and, and he comes up to him and he says, hey, hey, do you remember me? It's Father so-and-so from the Archdiocese of New York. And the poor beggar said, don't bother me. I don't want to have anything to do with you. Unless you give me some money, just leave me alone. So the priest from New York kept trying to obviously get his attention to no success. But he eventually says, look, I want to help you out. I'll give you some money to get you back on your feet for a little time. I just ask one favor from you. If you can do this, I'll help you out. So the poor beggar started to listen and he said, okay, what is it that you want me to do? He says, um, I actually just got an invitation from the Pope and he wants me to eat dinner with him tomorrow. Can you come with me? And the poor beggar said, no, that's the last person I want to see. I don't want to have anything to do with the church, especially the hierarchy. Thanks, but no thanks. So, the priest from New York obviously kept going back and forth, giving him some offerings and doing this and doing that. People from New York usually have a pretty good uh, way to convince other people. And eventually he said yes. So 
he got cleaned up. They, this is a true story. They went to the Vatican and they had dinner or supper with the Pope. And uh, they ate their pasta and red, drank their red wine and had cheesecake, whatever they do at the Vatican. So at the end of the meal, the Pope stands up and he says, I'm asking everyone to leave now because I need to see him. And he points to the old, to the poor beggar, the old priest, the priest that left the priesthood. And he says, I need to see him in my office. So everyone stood up silently and they started to go out of the room. At this point, if we were like in elementary school or like middle school, we're like, ooh, he's in trouble <laughs> at this point. So, so everyone leaves and he says, okay, come here with me. So the poor beggar, the, the priest that left the priesthood, you know, he's approaching John Paul II's office and says, Holy Father, thanks for the meal, but I've got to get going. You know, I've got a busy schedule. So, so thanks, but, but no thanks. God bless you. And the Pope said, no, no, I just want to talk to you for a little bit. And the poor beggar kept trying to get out of it, and John Paul II saw that. So he said, okay, I'm not going to force you being here. I just want to ask one favor from you. If you do this one favor, then I'll leave you alone. So the poor beggar was like, okay, you know, what's, what's up with these one favor things? What is it that you want from me? Just tell me, and then I'll leave. So John Paul II came up to him. He knelt down in his office and he said, Bless me, Father, for I have sinned, for I am a poor beggar in need of God's mercy. And the one favor that he was asking from this poor beggar was to go to confession to him. And we had a living saint there kneeling down on the floor to this priest that left the priesthood, and the priest was uh, so emotionally uh, charged to see that actually John Paul II was kneeling down in front of him to go to confession. He started to weep. And he denied it at first. He said, I'm the last person that should hear your confession. But he says, no, I insist. Please hear my confession. And after he heard John Paul II's confession, he was so edified by John Paul II, a living saint, going to confession to him, he went to confession to John Paul II. And to this day, they say that priest is in one of those churches in Rome. So we thank God that, especially in a witness like John Paul II, it shows us how important it is to go to God's mercy for our sins. Let us give thanks to the Lord, for he is good for his mercy endures forever.